The first and best victory is to conquer self. Welcome to the Conqueror Approach, a journey of self-mastery. To cultivate our mind, body, spirit, financial literacy, and allow our light to shine upon the world. Brought to you by me, your host, U.S. Navy submarine veteran and entrepreneur, Musa Mikkel. Let's conquer. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you. We're going to be talking about health and health is wealth. I'm a true believer in that. And we're going to talk about health. We're going to dive deep a little bit. We're going to go into some statistics on why you should eat your vegetables. We're going to start off with an ancient Egyptian proverb. One quarter of what you eat keeps you alive. The other three quarters keeps your doctor alive. That still holds true to this day. Because most of what we go to the doctors for nowadays are preventable and reversible through nutrition and healthy habits. I was actually looking at the pharmaceutical industry a little bit when I was reading that proverb again. And it ma- it makes sense. It makes sense. Last year, in 2019, the global pharmaceutical industry uh, made about $1.3 trillion. Trillion. With a T. Like, damn. Trillion. And about half of that, 50% of the market shares in the United States, that should say something. That should say something. And, and it just makes me question if we should really be trusting the government or pharmaceutical industries or even a lot of doctors. Because it, it seems like from my experience, you know, it's not really, it's not about your health. Now, I've, of course, some of them have the intention but then the they 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 got most doctors don't study nutrition very much they got their doctorate in medicine or not really medicine but drugs not really preventative mostly um but think about that 1.3 trillion dollars in drug sales globally that's insane and about 100 billion billion was for cancer drugs. So that's interesting. I think that's really interesting. You know, and there's a lot of studies out there that show a lot of the things that we are putting in our food, a lot of chemicals, um, almost every preservative has been linked to cancer at this point, Uh, processed meat, has been linked to cancer. There's so many things that's been linked to cancer and a lot of things that are in those processed foods that are not illegal yet. And I don't know if they ever will be because it seems like it's quite lucrative. I don't know. But with that being said, we are responsible for our bodies. Don't depend on anyone for health. Besides yourself. Okay? I believe God gave us these bodies, these healthy bodies, and we must do our part to keep them that way, to serve them, to treat it with true love and respect. Our bodies are our home, our vessel on this journey of life, our temple, right? Our container of our spirit. They are the house of our soul, right? So we should be taking care of it as sacred because it is. It is the most sacred gift that we have. This body allows us to live and experience life through its eyes and ears. Our heart gives us 
life as long as it beats. We didn't have to earn that. It was given to us. It was a gift. And I'm choosing not to take advantage of it. As best as I can, at least. There's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of forces. There's a lot of pollution. There's, there's a lot of things, right? You can't even eat a, a salad without knowing if there's pesticides in your food. You know, you have to go organic to try to eliminate most of it. We got to do our part. We got to do our best. We can. we can't just trust the information out there. There's n- literally known carcinogens in half the food at the grocery store, maybe more. Right. And I just want to go into something I'm passionate about, which is heart disease. I've lost family members because of heart disease at young age. An uncle at 55 and all at early 60s because of heart disease, which is the number one killer in America and probably globally. But about 647,000 Americans die each year from heart disease that's one in every four deaths because of heart disease that's insane because it is preventable it is preventable there's enough science to prove this and it's even reversible but we have this idea that if it runs in your family and you have a heart disease or if you're likely to get something like high blood pressure or diabetes and you end up getting it that it's fate it runs in my family mama had it daddy had it granddaddy had it no oftentimes it's the nutrition that's been passed down or the habits the lifestyle habits The dietary habits, the traditions of food we eat, that usually gets passed down generation to generation. And obviously with certain genes that are susceptible to more diseases, your likelihood is definitely increased. But that that doesn't mean that's your ultimate fate. Heart disease is reversible and preventable. And, you know, we should be treating our heart as sacred by doing what supports it what helps it and not hurt not hurting it now high blood pressure disrupts the lives of an estimated a 103 million US adults according to new statistics from the American Heart Association 103 million people it's pretty much normalized. You know, doctors don't even look at uh, what's pretty high as really dangerous. You could go in there with extremely high blood pressure, and I've seen this, and they would just, you know, ask, well, do you have any blaring, alarming symptoms? Like, can you see? Do you have, like, serious pain? What's the, what's the problem, right? Do you have any, or just, just high blood pressure? Well, here are some drugs. And we'll check on you, see if you feel better. Right? There's usually no conversation on what may be causing your blood pressure, some ways to reverse it, some ways to keep it down. Right? Some doc good doctors will, I'm sure. And then most of the time they're just like, What are your symptoms? Oh, you feel this? Well, here's some drugs. Right? And that's that's the problem. They're not getting to the root cause of the problem. So we truly can't depend on that. Unless you have an extraordinary doctor who interviews you about your daily life choices and maybe coaches you through some of that stuff, but they don't have time for that. They're, here, they're trying to treat hundreds of pe- patients and clients Make sure they can give them all the drugs they need. They don't. They only have a couple minutes to talk to you normally. <laughs> now I'm just I'm just speaking general. If you have a good doctor and you you're able to speak to them for more than one or two minutes, uh, that's good. And I hope they know a lot about this and they 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 really have your best interest 
not their uh, subsidized income based off drug prescriptions. Um, but yeah, now let's go on to another big one that I've seen my family and a lot of good people suffer with it without knowing its true causes or root causes because we live in a corrective medicine world. We're going to try to treat the symptoms because honestly, di- diabetics, they are lifelong customers and pharmaceuticals. Now, I mean, any business, we'd love to have dedicated lifelong customers till the day they die. That's pretty good for business, right? <laughs> if you have any business, but your, your clients come back every month or a couple weeks till the day they die, I'm sure you'd be happy. And I'm sure that's how a lot of the pharmaceutical industry has reached, is why it reached 1.3 trillion in 2019. That, that number still blows my mind. I don't think you understand how much a trillion is, because I didn't. But a trillion is a very, very, very big number. <laughs> but yeah, that's a lifelong customer. So 425 million people are estimated living with diabetes all over the world. That's a lot of customers for these drug companies on something that is reversible. It's been done. Diabetes has been reversed. High blood pressure has been reversed. Heart disease has been have been reversed. And there's ways, there's books, right? The body heals itself. The body truly heals itself. If you let it, if you get a cut... It's going to heal. But if you let it, not if you keep cutting the same spot two or three times a day, it might not ever heal. And that's kind of what we do with our nutrition. Now, health. Obviously, we want to move, be mobile, not live a sedentary lifestyle, which is hard nowadays if you have a job where you're sitting in an office all day. But don't let that be an excuse. I hear people getting those stand-up desks and having those little treadmills under the desk and walk while they're doing their work for eight hours, right? You end up walking ton, like a bunch of miles a day, keeping your legs moving, and it's you know gentle enough where it's not too distracting. You know, there's there's a lot of things you can do. You know, do a couple jumping jacks here and there, in between breaks. <laughs> Stop, drop, and do some push-ups? I don't know. There's there's things. If you really make it a priority, which it should be, health should be the number one priority. Because without health, we have nothing. And we take it for granted until it's too late. Or we take it for granted until we have some serious issues, and then we go to our fellow hospitals and doctors, and then what do they do? They ask you, what, what do you feel? Where's your pain? What's your family history? All right, here's some drugs. There's like 57 side effects. But, you know, don't worry about that because you have one problem. And adding 56 more problems, not that big of a deal. Right? <laughs> You've seen those those commercials, which is like, <laughs> you know, it will be for something like, oh, lower blood pressure. This medicine may cause anal bleeding, a rupture of the spleen. Uh, stomach cancer. This may cause blindness. <laughs> like, what? Why? Why would you ever try that? Why would you do that? Because you want your blood pressure to go down? Seriously? And then you're going to get explosive anal bleeding because you want some blood pressure to go down? <laughs> Nobody really pays attention to the side effects until they're one the one in 1,000 person that gets the the anal bleeding from trying this medicine or whatever. <laughs> you know, what's best is not to take artificial and lab-made drugs because nature is medicine. Food is thy medicine. Food can heal you. The body heals itself. It detoxifies wonderfully. It has organs for those things. And if you let it, 
And I mean, let it heal by fasting, taking time off where you're not eating crap and eating more natural food, more plants that grow from the earth that have vitamins and nutrients and antioxidants and fruit and vegetables and seeds and nuts and all those things. That will help you build the immune system to fight off a lot of these things. Right? Blood pressure, you could I could talk about for days because, you know, there's so much that goes into it. And it just bothers me that it's pretty normal. So many people have it. That's why it's, you know, it's it's normal because it's normal for Americans to die by heart disease. That's why it's normal to have high blood pressure. But it's really not normal. There's countries in Africa that reportedly have no heart disease. Isn't that crazy? It's it's kind of the poorer countries because they don't eat like crap every day. They don't eat they don't have McDonald's yet. And they don't eat meat five times a day or whatever. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're not eating the standard American diet. They're not drinking soda and all this crazy stuff. And they don't have high blood pressure or heart disease. And like the lowest blood pressures that's ever been recorded in some areas in Africa because they eat a whole food plant-based diet. You know, it's no mystery. If high blood pressure was normal, it'd be normal for all humans. No, just some. Some humans just got the bad card of the deck. No. They might have some genes that make them more susceptible, but that means they just got to work a little bit harder at taking care of themselves. You know, and it's it's sad. It's sad to see so many people living unconsciously to the point where they're obese and their quality of life is greatly hindered. Their mobility is hindered. I see, you know, people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, limping around, could barely move. And granted, I'm I'm, I'm speaking generally. I'm not shaming anyone. I don't know anyone's full story or background information, but... I've seen a few older seniors who really take care of their body, and you can tell when they're in. I've, I've hugged with someone in their 80s, right? I remember seeing a an old Japanese man. I think he was in his mid 80s, right? All silver hair, and he was hiking the same hike I was in Mount Charleston here in Nevada. And he was he was killing it. He looked shredded. He looked great. And I was just like, wow. You know, that that that's what it could look like. And then you go to like Walmart <laughs> and see like the 43-year-old who's like riding a scooter because they literally can't walk around because they're too overweight or whatever. Right? Like we have the choice to live a healthy life. And I feel like it's our duty to treat our body with that love and respect by doing the exercise, by eating right, putting the proper fuel in our body, not eating to just be pleasured with by our gluttony, but eating to live, not living to eat, right? Food is fuel, you know, and I, I get it, gatherings and whatnot, Bonding happens over dinners and whatnot. That's cool. And that's okay if you do that here and there. But it's what your what are your habits? Be be conscious to your daily habits when it comes to nutrition. What are you eating on a daily basis? Have you actually read the ingredients of the thing that's all the things that are in your pantry in your fridge right now? Like read the ingredients. And then and Take a look at the ones that you don't know how to pronounce or that sound like some weird chemical compound and Google it. Think of it. If you put unnatural things in your body, you're going to get a unnatural result. If you put chemicals in your body that's not designed to be processed by our cells, you're going to get an unnatural result. You're going to get inflammation. You're going to get... Uh, immune system issues you're going to have cancers and stuff like this develop and grow because you're putting 
unnatural things. You're going to get unnatural results. And then we, we question these unnatural things. We're like, well, why is this happening? Why do I feel this way, doctor? And the doctor gives you some more unnatural drugs to not cure you, but numb you from your symptoms long enough for you to like not be too bothered by it and not have any serious side effects. Because if you do, immediately stop that drug and you know try a different one. I mean, at the end of the day, it's our quality of life. You know, I want to be able to do everything I can to live like that older je- that older Japanese gentleman I met. You know, in my eighties, be able to hike mountains. You know, that's amazing. Not limping around, barely being able to move because I've neglected my body to the point where it atrophied and I can't walk or move or lift a box. You know? And granted, some people have accidents. Some people have disabilities. That's different. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the people who sat on their ass for 40 years and wonder why they can't walk. And like never stretched a day in their life or ate a piece of piece of broccoli ever. <laughs> or don't know what a pear looks like. Those are the people that <laughs> you need to eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. And stretch and, and work out and stay hydrated. All those things that you hear all the time that you ignore because you want to eat something that tastes better. The food is literally engineered now. All the processed food is literally designed by like scientists and stuff to make you more addicted. The McDonald's french fry has like 18 ingredients or something ridiculous. 18 ingredients and what should be potato and, you know, whatever oil they fried it in, which is terrible. And like salt. That's what what fries should be made out of. But no, it has like 18 different ingredients and all these preservatives and chemicals to make it taste a certain way and trigger certain chemicals in your brain and make you addicted and want more and have these this dopamine drug effect. Like food is like drugs. And then your tongue, your palate gets used to that fat and salt, right? It gets used to fat, salt, and sugar. That's why fat, salt, and sugar is in everything processed. (laughs) And all the other chemicals that can kill you. And that's what gets us used to eating that. So when we eat something bland, for example, like a vegetable that's not, you know, doesn't have fat and salt all over it. We can't actually taste it or it tastes bad because our palate's so used to the other, the other crap we are eating. The palate changes, though. The palate adapts to what you eat, what you put in your mouth. Just like our bodies adapt to our environment, our mouth adapts to what we're putting in there. So if you eat more vegetables, your palate starts getting used to it. If you lessen the salt, your body starts getting used to that. If you start eating less fat, your body gets used to that. And you're able to taste, you know, things a little bit more. Some people can't even taste like an avocado unless they put hella salt and whatnot in it. But I could. I could taste it wonderfully. It tastes great by itself. And that's like tests. If you can't taste bland thing, what's what's so-called bland, then your palate is probably oversensitive to... Uh, or undersensitive, I guess. Uh, anyway, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is eat your damn vegetables. We neglect our bodies because we not, we can't see the compounding issues. Taking advantage of our good health, Right? If you weren't born with a disability and a disease and you're able, if your legs are functioning and your arms are functioning and you and you have a functioning, able body, you should do your all, do your very best to maintain that. That's self-love. You know, most people wouldn't give their dogs M&Ms, junk food, fried food, soda, candy, I mean, you shouldn't. Shame on you if you ever did. (laughs) But you shouldn't. (laughs) 
But you give your kids willingly. You give them all the fried food, the junk food, the candy, the ice cream, the M&Ms, the soda. You know, we give the kids the chicken nuggets just because we want them to eat something. But not really thinking about the consequences of that. And there might not be immediate consequences, but think about that. Eating those chicken nuggets, those fried foods, damaging your DNA. When you eat fried food, it damages your cells, damages your DNA. And we constantly do that year after year after year after year. Then we see these unnatural things happen to our body. And then what? We're going to go to the doctor, tell them about these unnatural things. And they're going to give us some more unnatural things. And then there's a, just a never-ending cycle. Until what? Until you change. Until you change the way you look at it. Until you start taking ownership of health. And realizing your health is your wealth and your body is your home, is your temple. And it's the only vessel you're going to get on this journey of life. So please, I challenge you to take a little bit more, more action on your health. Take a look at your ingredients lists on your foods and your pantry and your fridge. Read a little bit more. Understand how you need to eat more vegetables. <laughs> this is an ongoing battle and I'm not perfect. I'm not an expert. I read a lot of experts. I try to connect with uh, nutrition specialists and I read books of doctors and whatnot. And I, I recommend How Not to Die by Michael Greger, which is a book that definitely changed the way I look at nutrition and its connection to the human body. And in that book, he goes through the top 15, the top 15 killers in America. And then he, he links all this science-based nutrition. And it's just, it's just great information. It's great information that we should know. Right? It's, it's, it's not necessarily about what we eat every so often, but what we eat on a daily basis. And using fuel to help us. So one thing that I try to do that helps me is before I eat... I ask myself in my head, is this going to help me or hurt me? And food can hurt you. Is it going to slow me down? Is it going to make me tired? Is it going to make me want to or need to take a nap? Am I going to get the itis? Or the, you know, diarrhea? (laughs) Double dragon? I don't know. Like, Or is it going to help me? Is it going to give me the energy I need? Is it going to fuel me? Is it going to help me sustain myself throughout the day to operate at a high, the highest performance I can be? If you want to operate at a high performance, you have to eat right. You have to eat things that fuel you and not junk. And why wouldn't we want to operate at high performance? Why wouldn't we want to operate on the highest level we possibly can? Time is... Time is very limited here on earth for every one of us. And to take advantage of our health shortens our time on earth, potentially. I mean, we don't know. You could be healthy, the healthiest guy on earth and get run over by a bus, but at least you can do everything you can. So when it gets to that point, when you are, when you are older, you have no regrets. So I should take care of myself better. You know, I want to be around for my friends and family longer or whatever the case is. And if it's not that, it's so I can actually live fully and enjoy every moment to the maximum capacity I can. So take care of yourself. Check out that book. Michael Greger also has a created nutritionfacts.org, which is all science-based nutrition. He's not trying to sell anything. He's not trying to sell any of his special supplements that cure all issues. There's no... Sales is just all science-based nutrition based off uh, studies and compilations of evidence. So check that out. Make your health a priority and live an abundant, healthy life. I appreciate you. That is all for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you found any value in this episode, someone you know will also. Please share, subscribe, leave a rating and review so we can reach more people, have a farther ripple and a larger impact. Stay grateful. I appreciate you.
And remember, you are a conqueror.